All right. Today we will be creating this card mechanic feature. And we can pick up the cards, drag it around and play them in this drop zone. Let's get to it. So I've created this example scene. I will have this project up on GitHub and I will leave a link in the description. So first I want to add some functionality to the cards. First of all, I want to be able to set the texture for each card individually. So I'm going to add a script and I'm going to create an export variable. And in the ready function, I will set the actual texture to this card texture. Now you will see we have an extra option here. I'm going to delete the uh, original texture. And here I'm going to set my card texture. <coughs> but I still can't drag them. So the next step is to add a function which is built in get track data. We will not be using the add position. If you don't put the underscore there, the compiler throws a warning. This function is used to get some data of the object you're trying to drag. Uh, and if it's a valid drag situation, it will actually pass that data. Nothing much is changed. If we look at our scene, however, you do see now, if I go over here, there's a something saying I can't do it. So I am actually dragging something. There's just no place to drop it yet. To visualize that better, we can create a drag preview. I will just duplicate the current card. Make it a bit transparent. And then there's another built-in function for dragging and dropping. Now if we run the code, you will see we're actually dragging something. But we can't put it anywhere yet. That's the next step. And then we have to go back to our example scene, go to the drop zone, add a script. <coughs> and we will be using uh, two more built-in functions. Can drop data. We will not be using the position and for this example I also won't be using the data. You, sh you could use the data if you have multiple sources of items that can be dropped somewhere and not everything may be dropped in here. I'm just gonna say return true because everything we're dragging can be dropped in this zone. If we now run the code you will see our hand our mouse cursor turns into a hand and I can actually release it here. Nothing happens because we still need to implement that, which is another built-in function. These three functions make it possible to do drag and drop in Godot uh, with all sorts of control nodes, basically. I'm gonna say that we have a dropped card But what, how do we know which card and how do we do something with that card? It's going to be coming from data. I want to instantiate the card in this drop zone. So I'm going to create another export variable here.
and we just have to put our card seen here. We're gonna add the dropped card as a child. So now we're adding it as a child, but nothing will happen because in the card scene we have to set the texture uh, after it's being created. So we can do that. Dropped card text texture equals something from the data. We're just not setting it yet. So if we go back to the card, we can actually uh, set that data here. So we can say data texture equals, I'm gonna say card texture, doesn't really matter. But. All right, so now when we're returning the data, we're also passing the texture. So if we run this code, we should be able to pick up a card, drop it. So that's already pretty cool, but we're now basically duplicating our cards. We want to actually remove this card after it's been played. So how we do that is we need to go to the drop zone and we need to say, okay, once I've dropped the card, I want to let the card know it has been played and handle it accordingly. There are multiple ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call it card actions. I'm going to put a signal here. Played card. And I'm going to say the card had a certain identifier. I'm going to auto load this script. So I can access it everywhere. And I'm gonna say card actions emit signal played card with an ID, which I don't have yet, but remember, same with the texture. We can go to the card and we can just add an ID. We don't have an ID yet, so let's create that. And let's say when we're creating the card, we also give it a random number as ID. So that should be working. And now I want to for this card to listen to the signal. So I'm going to connect to the played card signal and I'm going to say was I played as a function. I'm going to create that one. It passes an ID. Let's call it card ID. And I'm going to say if this card ID equals my ID, I'm just gonna remove myself. So now I can pick up this card and it actually moves. All right, so far for the card mechanic. Bye-bye.